When a marriage is shaken by thoughts of doubt and a lack of trust by one partner, what can the other one do? First story. When my husband, 38 male, suggested an open marriage for me, 40 female, my marriage ended in my heart. He just asked me out of the blue about seven to eight months ago and my initial reaction was, am I not enough for him? I mean yes, I know I could have made more effort, lost these last stubborn five pounds, maybe put on sexy lingerie more often and I don't know, spend less time with our babies and not sleep halfway through our movie night on Fridays but it still came as a shock to me that he wasn't satisfied with our life. I thought we had a solid foundation of mutual love and respect and we both have a high sex drive. He explained that it had nothing to do with our love life or relationship. This could just be something more to add for the both of us. My marriage died then and there, in my heart at least. I didn't want to make any rash decisions while heartbroken and act without thinking carefully first. I said no and that it was nothing I ever wanted to try. He said that it was fine and that he loved me immensely. Now months have gone and I have been thinking carefully but my initial feeling that my marriage died isn't changing. He has noticed and even complained that I have been distant and that he wanted me back but I don't know, I don't think it is working for me anymore with what my husband suggested looming between us even if he hasn't approached me with his suggestion again. It is not just the feeling of inadequacy that is putting a wedge between us, but the thought that he can imagine another man being with me. Touching, kissing and being inside me without it making him sick with jealousy. I even think this part hurt me more than him wanting to sleep with others. We have two children together, four and one and our marriage is working very well. We are compatible in every other aspect and our babies are happy. How can I ask for divorce knowing that nothing will be the same for my babies anymore? I need advice on how to move on with him with all these feelings inside of me. I can't just divorce a man for asking me something and then respecting me when I said no, I just can't. Update I want to start by thanking everyone who wanted to help me. I really appreciate you. Before I update, I wanted to maybe apologize for the poly people who found my post offensive. I don't know, but seeing that I was very clear in my post that your lifestyle wasn't for me, I don't know why you still made superior comments about how better off you are and even making it sound like wanting a monogamous husband equals wanting an abusive possessive husband? In what delusional world are you living? Do you know how many poly men slash women I know who are in very abusive relationships? Why do you feel the need to crap on other people's choices to feel better about yours? What am I missing here? Anyway, I don't know about my feelings. I have spoken to my husband about how I was feeling. I told him how I was turned off by the whole thing and that even if he respected my no, something has broken inside of me and that I don't know how to mend it. How to find my way back. I told him that even though he would fully promise that he chosen me and the life we have together, I will always know that this is not really what he wanted. I told him that the thought of him being okay with sleeping with others, and the thought of him being okay that me, his wife, being in someone else's arms makes me sick every time I think about it. I also asked him whether he was already sleeping with others slasher have had someone in mind. He swore up and down that this wasn't the case and gave me all his devices to check. He just wanted to try open marriage because, and I will paraphrase here, monogamy worked when people died when they were 40 but now when we live till we are 80 or 90, maybe monogamy isn't enough. 
I'm the love of his life and that won't change but do we want to be exclusive for 40, 50 or 60 years? I asked him why he just doesn't want to commit to just me, until one or both fall out of love and we go our separate way but he said that he didn't want to fall tout f love. He wanted us to be together because he loves our life but also we could see other people so it doesn't get boring. I told him that the life he is dreaming of isn't the life I wanted at all. He was very alarmed and said that in that case he chose me and our family. He would do anything to gain back my trust including therapy. I will try that as last resort but to be totally honest, I think we are over. I just don't want to throw in the towel without exhausting all options because I want to look back and know that I did everything in my power to save my marriage. I have even contemplated giving him a pass to open the relationship on his end but then I'm not sure if I could still be intimate with him. What kind of a marriage would that be? I know this is just an update but please if you have more just hit me. The top replies. If you are truly invested in trying all options to mend your relationship, whatever you do, do not give him a pass to run off making love to other women and being inside them. I am not sure why you think that's a good way to fix things, when the thought of him in the throes of passion with other women or even wanting to be, was at least half the reason you were crushed. Once he does that, there will be no coming back from it. That will be the final nail in the coffin. Besides, I would never trust that protection would be used all the time so you would be opening yourself up to STD risks, both curable and incurable as well as cancer causing. Instead, a better option is trying marriage counseling. His excuse for his reasoning to me seems ridiculous and conflicts with his other comments. It also neglects to give you a sound explanation as to why he would sacrifice you being with other men, just so he can have other women. As for those pollies who were harassing you, they can fork right off and take a hike. Your post was not the least bit offensive to them. Not being poly and not having the desire to be one is also not offensive. And if that offends any of them, that's too bad. Life is too short to entertain the level of stupidity that compels someone to be offended over someone else's relationship preferences. Second reply. Original poster I'm sorry your husband is a dummy. You seem like a wonderful woman and as I stated in er prior post you wanting to be monogamous in er marriage as that's what the hell you married for is valid. I feel exactly the same and if my husband came to me like that I'd leave him. You aren't wrong. Don't give him a pass or he's gonna hurt you more if he chooses to use it and you will ultimately feel like it's your fault for okaying it. He still seems adamant on this whole poly thing despite what he says. You can't choose er marriage and still insist you can sleep with other people. I would never be able to look at my husband the same way again and I feel like you feel the same. Being completely in love and invested in a marriage does not work that way. You deserve so much better. He's an idiot to lose you so he can live in some delusional fantasy world because that's the only one his logic makes sense in. And don't even get me started. Whether it's the 40s or 2023 monogamous relationships exist. Just because people are more open now doesn't mean everyone shld jump on the bandwagon of sleeping with everyone while being in a supposed loving relationship. If you don't want that you don't. And you should never do anything you aren't comfortable with. The poly people who attacked you can go screw themselves.
I have poly friends who would smack the hell out of my husband if he tried this crap with me because they know what we signed up for. Respect people's choices like you want ors respected. If it works for you sure fine. Not all of us want that. So take er judgment somewhere else to someone that's interested in that crap and leave this woman alone. The third reply. My experience personally with someone who accepted, my answer that I didn't want an open relationship was that it really eroded the relationship over time. Things deteriorated for about a year while they quietly resented me for not being open to it and I quietly built up paranoia surrounding how they really felt about our friends, now that I knew they wouldn't be committed to just me given the choice to add other partners. No one was happy and we should have just saved us both some time and moved on. I really truly wish you an easier time with this than I had. The second story. My, female 24, fiancé, male 24, has had a complicated life. His dad abandoned him before he was born, his mother was a single mother for some years until she met her actual husband, they had two kids together. From what my fiancé has told me, his mother was very lovely but his stepdad was a total a hole. Once he had his own kids, he made sure to let my fiancé know that he was worthless in comparison to his own kids. I disagree about his mother being nice because she enabled this behavior from her husband to her own kid but I wasn't there so I can't know for sure. My fiancé likes gaming and anime, he has since he was a kid however, he was shamed by his stepfather because of it. Their relationship is not good and it's all his stepfather's fault. He never tried to be a parent for him and hated having to keep him in the house. My fiancé's grandmother told me this. When he was a teen everything was an issue, from his hobbies to friends, and anything he did was wrong. Well, anyway, he's in college now and is studying to be a programmer. He's doing great. His mom invited us over to dinner. We drove there and luckily we didn't have to put up with his stepfather for too long because he wasn't home when we got there. He arrived just a little before lunch was served. After eating we were hanging out in the living room, when my fiancé's mom asked him about college. He started talking about his grades, his classes and other school-related stuff. His stepfather asked his sister who's a senior in high school if she had been studying. She said she did and he said great because she needs to be a head foe next year. He then explained that his daughter was getting ready because she'll go into law school next year as he is a lawyer too. Then, he said the comment that made me snap. He told my fiancé that law school was hard and being good at it is something to brag about because everyone can play video games all day but not everyone can graduate from a serious career. He literally said this. I looked over at my fiancé and he was sad, he didn't said anything but I know him. So I snapped. I told him that if he thought that studying programming was playing video games all day then he was far more ignorant than I thought he was. I originally planned to stop it there but then I got caught up in the moment and also told him that he was an idiot for dragging my fiancé down on purpose. I also told him that he must have a miserable life if he's so focused on causing pain on others. Nobody said anything and my fiancé asked me to leave so we did. He's not angry at me, quite the opposite, he thanked me for standing up for him. I made sure that he knows I support and love him. However, he got a message later from his mother about how rude I was for disrespecting his stepdad and how I ruined the day. 
I honestly don't care and neither does he, but I want to know if I was too rude or not. The top replies. His stepdad sounds completely vile. Good on you for standing up to the asshat. However, your fiancé needs to learn to stand up for himself. Therapy might be beneficial for him, and he truly needs to go LC or no contact with his mother. It's obvious his mom prioritizes the stepdad over him, so for his mental health he needs as little contact as possible. If that means they don't come to your wedding, so be it. I truly don't think they deserve that honor. The original poster replies. He has anxiety so it's hard for him to stand up for himself sometimes, and I think growing up in that environment was not helping either, sadly he's used to his stepdad telling him hurtful stuff and just keep quiet. He loves his mother, I think there's no rationality regarding feelings, maybe someday he'll realize what his mom allowed and why she's as bad as his stepdad, but it's a hard step for him. The second reply. His mother's message should have been, Honey, I'm so sorry that my husband said those horribly rude things about you. We both know that he won't apologize or realize he was being cruel, but I do realize his behavior was wrong and cruel to you, and for my part in not speaking up, I do apologize. I'm glad you have a partner that will call a spade a spade, and that you realized it was okay to leave early. I'm so sorry that I don't dare to say anything when he's like that. I'll understand if you don't want to visit here when he's home again, to protect yourself from his bad behaviors. No one should have to hear such horrible meanness aimed at them, like he did to you. In the future, let's meet up at restaurant instead, without him, and I will pay for it. I should have protected you from him, years and years ago. The message she sent is Darvo. Darvo means deny, attack, reverse victim and offender. It's how the manipulators flip the situation into making the victim apologize to their offender. His mother blaming you for disrespecting her husband, who just spent the visit being abusive and manipulative to your boyfriend, totally disrespecting your boyfriend, is Darvoing. His mother blaming you for ruining the visit is Darv Oing. You didn't ruin the visit, her husband ruined the visit with his abuse. If you hadn't said anything at all, but quietly sat there and allowed her abusive husband to continue to abuse your boyfriend in front of his equally silent mother, you would have been joining her in enabling the abuse and the visit would still have been ruined for your boyfriend and for you. When you called out the abuser, his mother claims that ruined the visit. She's not seeing it as ruining the visit for the two of you, but for the two of them. Her husband didn't get to continue his abuse. She didn't get to continue her pretense that his words were fine and not damaging her son. You didn't ruin the visit. You ripped the blinders off the pretense of her fantasy of playing happy family, while she ignores the abuse that happens right in front of her. She's enabling his abusive behaviors to her own son. And now, she's enabling the abuse further, by Darv Oing who gets blamed. A reasonable response to his mother's message might be, Mom, the visit was ruined when your husband spoke about me and to me the way he did. He ruined the visit, not original poster. I hope you are able to see this. When he's ready to give a real apology for his behavior, one that includes how he's changing his behavior for the future, I'll be able to visit at your home again. Until then, I will not be visiting where he is. So, if you want to meet us, alone, at a local restaurant for future visits, I can do that. 
However, please understand that I find it unacceptable that you are blaming original poster for what your husband did. <laughs>